Hey everybody, thanks for joining us for our Thursday evening prayer service. I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, tonight we're gonna worship a little bit and then we're gonna talk a little bit about prayer and we're gonna pray together. But remember how we've, uh, how we've modeled prayer in these days. We've, uh, we've used some, uh, some physical posturing and, and this is like the weight of all of our worries and our concerns, our anxieties, our stresses. And we've just kind of felt those. And then, and then we moved our hands to, to represent that we're placing those at the feet of Jesus, right? We're casting our cares on him because he cares for us. And then, and then we lift our hands back up to be filled by him. And then, and then we lift our hands thanking him and praising him. Let's pray together before we begin worship. Jesus, we do thank you for your presence in our lives that no matter where we're at, no matter the distance that we're apart, no matter what the circumstances, no matter how bright and filled with sunshine or how bleak, your word says, you don't leave us, you don't forsake us. When we gather and where we gather, you're with us right there in the middle. We praise you for that, Jesus. And tonight I pray that you would, you would just calm our hearts and lift our spirits and, and Lord, work in us as we, as we come before you with all of our praise and adoration, all of our needs, all of our intercession and, and petition. Lord, be at work. We love you, Jesus. Man, hear and receive our worship. In your name, amen.
Everybody, I'm glad that you're still with us. And man, what a great time of worship. I love that last song, In Christ Alone. Like he's the cornerstone that holds it all together for us. How true that is. And that actually leads us into the, uh, into the reality that uh, that conversation with him and, and prayer is so essential for us. And, uh, you know, I love the verse that says, in him, you know, we move we breathe and we have our being in him. He holds everything together and everything is created by him and for him and through him. And that's the reality of what God's word says. And, and that's one of the reasons why prayer is so incredibly important to us. Now, you notice uh, you notice tonight that, that we have quite a slew of characters that's surrounding me, right? Uh, these are these are your pastors, and, and what a great team. And not all of them are here, but the ones that are here, the ones that aren't here, what a great team we have. And uh, and I asked them to join join me in just having a dialogue about prayer, where where we can learn maybe some things to apply to our lives about prayer, and, and then we're gonna pray together. Um, you know, just about what's happening in, in, in our world and, and in our community and in our families in these days. So, so uh, first question I have kind of to kick off the dialogue for us is, um, is I would like every, every pastor here, I'd like you to, to share what is your favorite passage of scripture, verse of scripture on prayer and why is it that? So, so Brandon, why don't you kick us off? Sure. Yeah, my, my verse is uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and 18. It says this, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And I find that, you know, in the world we're in, it is constantly dragging us to the negative. Um, the news, like 
everything wants to really pull you down. And so this verse is just a reminder for me that, that prayer is a source of hope for us. It's our connection to God that we can have wherever we're at. Um, and that is God's will for us is to, to be hopeful and to be thankful even in times of uh, distress and trouble. Good, good. Bianca. Um, I really love the verse, um, Philippians 4, verse 6, which says, which says um, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, um, with prayer and petition and with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And I think that's really powerful because the life and the world we live in today, it's so easy to be anxious about every little thing. But God says, pray, ask, and give thanks. And um, those are easy steps to follow and it's just an easy reminder that prayer doesn't have to be like sometimes it is this big elaborate thing but sometimes it's so simple it's just praying and thanking Mm -hmm. god and asking him good good harold my first is second chronicles 7 14 and um basically god is saying to his people that um if they would like humble themselves and pray like he's going to do some great things you know and i think that um that verse kind of really speaks to me because it it speaks to this ideal that God is into his people as a whole. Like he really wants us to like come together and come in and seek his face and then he's gonna move, you know what I mean, so. Yeah, nice, nice, good. LT. For me, it is Hebrews chapter four, verses 15 to 16. And it really talks about the character of God and our relationship to him. It says that we don't have a high priest who can't empathize Mm -hmm. with our weaknesses, but then we can come boldly to his throne. And the reason why, that encourages me is because number one when I talk to God I know he already knows but I can tell it how I feel it I don't have to use as Bianca said I don't have to use fancy words big words but he can empathize he knows how I feel and I can just tell him how I feel it and I'll get what I need and I'll get the grace in my time of need and so I love those verses good good deal Boy, I tell you, it's like uh, it's like listening to a commentary on prayer. Yeah. So, <laughs> so good stuff. We're drinking from deep waters tonight. Yes. So, so, so here's a here's a here's a, uh, a thought that I've been having about prayer. So, you know, prayer is listed as as one of the spiritual disciplines for Christians. And whenever we hear the word discipline, normally we think of, you know, some sort of restriction or, or some sort of something that's not like a joyous thing, you know, that, that's something that we have to work at. And, and although I know prayer is an incredibly joyful thing, there, there, there needs to be a consistent habit in conversation with God. So like in your personal prayer lives, um, Tell me, tell me what, what are, are some of the habits that you've developed that has helped you stay consistent in your prayer life? So LT, why don't you, why don't you answer that for us? For me, um, the thing that helped me is starting out each of my day with a prayer starting my day, just submitting the day to God because he knows what's going to happen in the day. I have no idea what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So for me, starting off with just submitting my day and giving my day to the Lord and just asking him to prepare me for whatever may come for the day and to give me the words that I might need, that helps me start it off and that, that helps cover my day. And it keeps me, keeps my mind focused that whatever I have to confront whatever I have to do that he's there already Mm -hmm. and so that's a that's helps me by just kicking off my day good great great start the day with talking to the Lord yes boom right and then you do that first thing you don't forget right that's right you don't right good start you off well like making my bed also (laughs) pray like I have to finish something in the beginning of each day you know I, I heard somebody say one time the state of your bed is the state of your head Right. So the guy was like, hey, don't leave your bed a mess. Make your bed. But what you're saying is the state of your prayer, your conversation with God is really the state of your heart and mind. Absolutely. I like it. I like it. So, Brandon, what are what what are some habits that you've developed that that really help your prayer life? Yeah, I think one of the biggest things for me is not delaying my prayers. I know a lot of times I used to think, oh, I need to remember all these prayer requests that I have and compile them into this 30 minute quiet time that I spend with God. 
And for me as an extrovert, that was always hard to do because I like filling my day with spending time with people. And I found that um, locking myself down to an hour of quiet prayer was really hard for me to focus. So one of the big things that I do is when people pop into my mind or when different requests or thoughts that I have, I just try to make that a conversation as I go through my day. And so... um, it's really just instant. And so I found that a combination of that and my parents always instilled in me uh, from the time I was a kid that we prayed before meals. And so uh, rather than just saying, Jesus, thank you for this food, um, I use those as intentional times of prayer that I know I'm going to get three times a day, um, every day where I'm spending time just in conversation with God. Good, good. I like it. Do not delay. Pray. So soon as it hits your mind, right? Bam, yeah. man, pray. That's good. That's good word. So, um, so let's talk a second, uh, right? Those are, those are some habits, some ideas of how we become consistent in our prayer life. But then let's talk about what are, what have been distractions or hindrances to us in prayer. And so, uh, so Bianca, start us off that, you know, what are things that have hindered you or distracted you? Um, I think what you said earlier was really great is like in prayer, we have to be disciplined and some of the Sometimes it's super easy to let life just get in the way. That's why when LT said, start the day with prayer, like that is so true. Like by the time I wake up, nothing really has happened yet. You know, don't check your phone. Don't look anywhere else, but like pray first. And like that'll, for me, that really helps. I'm not having distractions Mm because that's what really, distractions take our time and our attention away from from the things that matter and not saying the distractions are bad they could all be great and good things but um they could take our time away from prayer Mm -hmm. so getting up first thing praying is like a big deal good Harold, what are your thoughts? Hindrances or distractions to you in prayer? I find for me it's more effective, like, because I'm probably a night person more than anything else. So, like, I'm usually praying, like, when the house is quiet, like, when everybody's asleep or, um, you know, when things kind of settle down. Um, most of the time I find myself uh, when I'm having most effective times of prayer is when I'm, like, actually, like, watching a movie or something. And then, like, maybe in, in that movie, like, I just feel like, you know what, turn that stuff off and like, you know, take some time out mm-hmm. and pray. So, you know, it's kind of probably more spontaneous, mm-hmm. but um, also like just, you know, I, I pray, I journal a lot. So, you know, I like take a scripture and like start journaling and um, start praying about, you know, what I feel like God is saying to me. Um, and, you know, um, but so mostly he's just yeah. making it a point to like, you know, um, discipline myself to take time out or, if I find that the day is getting away from me, you know, I'll just stop, right? you know, drop and roll, you know what I mean? And <laughs> get a prayer good. up. Man, good. And, stuff. and I like that. Like if you journal, if you're right, doesn't, doesn't the word even say, you know, let things become clear through them, through, you know, through your pen, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and so you're like, boy, you're spending some time, you know, praying, but you're writing some of those some, things yeah, out yep. and that helps you focus, right? Cause you have some activity to your prayer. That's great. So I know that I'm, what Brandon mentioned being an extrovert and how that impacts you praying. You know what I mean? Boy, that's, I've found that in my own life, that, that there's times in which, uh, you know, I hear something or somebody's talking or, or something's going on over here. And it's like immediately I'm like, Phew, and I've needed to, you know, so, so way back when I was in seminary, I remember D. Freeborn in our spiritual, uh, spiritual development, spiritual growth class talked about pray through your personality. Mm. which is what you said a little bit, you know what I mean? And, and so I remember when he first said, Hey man, if you're an extrovert and you can't sit still, walk around and pray. You don't have to bend your knees, fold your hands, get out there, walk around and pray. So I kind of had developed that habit in my early days in the ministry. I used to go into the worship center and I would just pace and pray and pace and pray and walk through and all sorts of different things. That's, that's good. That's good. You know, these are different days, Mm. different days we're in, right? Um, you know, with, uh, with, with the quarantine and the length of the quarantine. And we're all praying that that ends, right? You know, here at, at some time soon that, that it's safe enough to be able to go out with wisdom um, and, and interact again at, at different levels. Um, but in these different days, right, the Lord's been speaking to us through our prayers, right? And he's telling each one of us maybe a little bit of what we need. I actually got a text message today from a really good friend who, who said, um, 
they said, hey, I, I dreamt about you last night. Mm. That really interesting. Sometimes, right, the Bible talks about God speaking to somebody through prayer or through dreams. And, um, and they said, you were fighting a lion. And you encouraged me because you were fighting ferociously. Mm. And so I got that, and I thought, oh, well, wow. I'm in your dreams, you know. <laughs> what a compliment. And he didn't call it a nightmare, which was a nice thing. But And then he said I was fighting ferociously, which was encouraging to me. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I mean? So I thought, hey. But it also made me think, um, maybe I need to just watch out for the prowling things in my life that are mm. trying to devour me. And that became like a real word for me today. When, when my friend texted me and, 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 and said that. So, so like in this day, in your conversations with God, what are some of the things that, that God's been, 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 been telling you? So Harold, why don't you, why don't you share with us a minute what the Lord's telling you? I think the, um, most, most of all, like to be available, like, you know, like I've been getting like um, a lot of responses to, you know, um, I've been making a lot of calls, um, uh, reaching out to people who I might not normally like connect with and um you know just like asking how they're doing and um the amazing thing is that people when you like reach out to them and like is there anything I could be praying for you for or any needs um it's just amazing to me um how people um just how how impactful it is on them as far as that somebody cares like mm-hmm. you know like oh wow it's just so good to hear from you Pastor Harold yeah. you know and you know, I miss you or, you know, it's just, right. it just creates its, its environment. So for me, I just really feel like God is constantly pushing me to like, you know, reach out to people, you know, and I'm okay. like, ah, God, you know, I don't really talk to people like that. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I and he's like, no, you yeah. know, send an email, make a call. Sure. Um, you know, so, it, but it's just really, man, it's really been impacting my life. And I find that the more I'm doing it, the more, uh, the more strength I feel, you know, I yeah. almost feel like I'm calling somebody to encourage them. Yeah. And I always end up being encouraged, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so really, God I just keep Good reaching work. out. Keep Good work. Brandon, yeah. what's the Lord been telling you? Yeah, I feel like God's really been working with me with just the concept of, like, full reliance on Him. You know, mm-hmm. I think if I were to look at my life even before this, I would, I would like to think that, you know, I have a very heavy reliance on Him in, in almost every area of my life. And, um... And with this quarantine stuff, as I mentioned, I'm an extrovert. I, like, need to be around people. Uh, it is it is excruciating for me to not have that. And I feel like there's, like, parts of my life that are missing when I don't get to have those interactions. And so, you know, I'm over a little over a month into quarantine, you can imagine I'm, like, breaking down the walls, trying to get out of the house for any reason I can. Um, but God has really just been revealing that he can supply every single thing we need. And even something that feels like, oh, I need to be around people to get this energy to, to feel okay, to feel happy. Um, I'm finding how to to get that through God. And so it's another area of my life that I didn't realize I wasn't relying on him. Um, but through the course of all this stuff and through the prayers that I've had with him, it's brought me into a recognition of that um, and a fulfillment that I haven't had in that way before. Awesome. Awesome. Bianca. Yeah. Um... A, a few, well, this has been a thing for me for a while is I've always wanted, um, like just to take a week and just like spend it with God or just take a day and the whole day, like go out camping and spend the day with God. You know what I mean? Like I do a little retreat for myself. And I was like, Oh, when I finish school, I'll, I'll, I'll take this day. Or when I finish like work, I'll, I'll take vacation and take a day. And then that day never happened because schools keep having life keeps happening. But I think like life continues to go on now that we're in quarantine but there's other aspects that have also slowed down and I've really been feeling God calling me of like maybe your retreat on a camping trip by yourself isn't happening but like maybe this is the closest like you'll ever be like this is the time to do it and imagine like coming out of this quarantine if I like every day work on like just growing closer to him and leaning in on him after this quarantine, what my relationship him, like with him will be like. Because mm-hmm. the truth is, like we've been a month in, and I haven't had a month of this much time that I could be working and I could be doing to, to better my relationship with him. Mm-hmm. That even though this is difficult times, like we can still be leaning in and pushing in and growing. And like at the end of this, what, what is our relationship going to look like? And that's mm-hmm. really, 
it's really exciting for me because there's so much potential there. Yeah, yeah, good, good. LT. Yeah, it's a, it's a combination of what a bunch of us have said. I like how B said he's learning full reliance on God, but it's related to his personality. But for me, it's relying on God to know to to know what to say. Because as Harold was saying, when we're calling so many people and folks are reaching out to us, you don't always know what they're going to say. Mm -hmm. And they're looking to us often for comfort or for something, sometimes even clarity and direction. We may not always know, but thank God that the Holy Spirit knows. And as we submit our time, our words, our days to him, he'll, he gives the right words to say. So what he's letting me know is, when you open your mouth, I'll fill it with the right words mm. because we're doing it in service to other people. Mm. So yeah. that is what is really resonating for me right now. Good. Yeah. So so we're going to go to prayer and we're going to spend a few minutes in prayer about, um, you know, just about what's happening in our world. And and in fact, um, one or two things uh, that, that, that you can do is uh, you can go to our prayer page at our website and you can download the prayer request. You know, there's a list of prayer requests as people send them in, as you fill out a, a prayer request on the on the website, it gets put on our prayer list and then our then our prayer warriors are praying. In this day, you can grab that list and you can pray um, along with our prayer warriors. And then also you can post a sentence prayer on our Facebook page. It's one of the ways that we can pray together, right? One of the ways we can pray together. You know, I, I'm going to that. I find myself going to actually my wife's Facebook page because I'm not on Facebook, but I, I go to that and I look and go, oh, and I'm just tracking the, the prayers that people are lifting up so I can kind of agree together with them, you know, because the scripture talks about that. And, but but my, final, my final question is, um, is why is it, important for us to pray together okay why is it important for God's people to pray together and um, and give me a just give me a one sentence response so LT you go first it unites us good it unites us absolutely I think it it identifies us I think it's that thing that God said in his word that People will know us by the love we have for one another. Yeah. And I think when we pray together, yeah. it's what is more symbolic of that than um, the love that we have for each other when we come together and pray. Good, good. Bianca? Because we're not alone. We're, yeah. we're together in this. Right, good. Yeah, mine's similar to Bianca. Just, it eliminates the distance between us and mm -hmm. unites us in, in a common cause. And... Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. And I, and I hope you've enjoyed this little bit of dialogue about prayer. And I feel like I've learned some things. I felt like I've uh, got some ideas on, on, on maybe even how to make my prayer life uh, more consistent and, and more rich in these days. And, but, um, but we do want to pray together. Yes. And so, um, so as we prepare our hearts to do this, um, um, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, uh, just take, just say, um, uh, Harold, why don't you why don't you lead us off in prayer, and and then and then Bianca, why don't you jump in, um, and then and then LT, I'll have you I'll have you close it out, okay? So so let's do that. But Harold, okay. kick us off here. Father God, we thank you. We just thank you for uh, being so good to us, and you promised that if we came together and prayed and humbled ourselves before you and sought your face that you would heal our land, God, and we need you so badly to heal our land. Mm -hmm. So we just come together in this time, in this moment, and we seek your face. Um, mm -hmm. we, we look to you for the answers and the solutions that only you can give. Mm -hmm. So we just we just hold on to that, Father. We just hold on to your promise that if we continue to humble ourselves and pray, you would heal our land. Yes. Right. right. God, we, we pray for every prayer request shared. Um, God, we ask boldly that that you answer those, maybe not in the ways that we always think they're going to be answered, but God, you are working and you are at work and you are answering all those prayers. God, I pray for healing. I pray for hope. Mm -hmm. God, I pray for comfort and peace in the hardest moments when it's when it feels like there's not much there. God, surround us with your love that surpasses everything. God, we, we praise you for the things you are you're doing in our world and in our lives because God, we, we, we praise you for the goodness you are showing. And God, we pray that how we interact with each other and how we interact with our neighbors and our world around us, God, that, that people will see you through us. Yes, Lord. 
Father, we thank you so much. We thank you, God, for your presence. We thank you because we know without a doubt that you are here with us. I thank you, God, that you are even reaching through the airwaves and into every home, every business, every family, every organization that is represented through those who are watching. You are the God of it all, Father, and we thank you so much. We thank you, God, that we will get through this. We thank you, God, for your peace and comfort in the midst. We thank you for being able to come together in unity, speaking a common language of faith, knowing that you are with us in the midst of this particular journey. We thank you, God, and we honor you. We praise you, we glorify you, and we know that things are going to get better for all of us. So give us peace and comfort, direction, wisdom, guidance, strength, faith, and hope. In your powerful, Amen. awesome, Amen. matchless name, we pray. Amen. 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 And I know you were praying with us Amen. tonight, and I thank you for that. And keep praying. And, and remember, two places you could go. I mentioned it before. Go to the website, put in a prayer request. Multiple people will join you in prayer. You can get the list of prayer requests there. Uh, go to the Facebook page, post a prayer. If you post a prayer there, I know I know others are visiting that. They're looking at those sentence prayers and they're agreeing with you. So, so although we might not be able to be face to face, I mean, we can be spirit to spirit in these days, right? We can still pray together. So let's use the means that are available. Text somebody, text a prayer to them. Man, pick up your phone, Amen. call them, email a prayer, yes. do whatever it is, but Amen. stay praying together in these days. Amen. So, hey, we're taking our burdens, right? We're placing them at his feet, right? We're receiving what he has for us and we're praising his name for it. Amen. God is good to us. Amen. Boy, it's been good to be together, and uh, I look forward to being together again with you this Sunday live stream. We'll see you there. Invite a friend, host a watch party. See you then.